Aš naudu tikva. It's an Irish mm, I love that little song. What made you think of it? What made me think of it? <laughs> We're married, aren't we, Irish? <laughs> Besides, it was so peaceful here today. That's because the kids are out playing. Yeah, you know something, honey? Mm -mm. When they're out playing, it's really very quiet here. Why don't we rent them out to a nervous couple for a month or so? <laughs> I win! Hi, uh, folks! Hey, whoa, whoa, what kind of way is that to come into the house? I win. Come back in. Close the door. Oh. We were racing. You better go on and race right upstairs and wash. You know you're late for dinner? I'm not hungry. Huh. Look who's not hungry, hollow leg Linda. What do you mean you're not hungry? I just had a strawberry ice cream soda. Oh, Linda, why would you have a strawberry soda right before dinner? Why, well, I have to have something to wash down my chocolate bar. <laughs> you mean you also bought a chocolate bar with what? With nuts. <laughs> I mean, where did you get the money? Let's go wash up, Linda. <laughs> Wait a minute, just a minute. Come right back here. I want to know where you got the money for an ice cream soda and a chocolate bar. From Rusty. He gave me part of his allowance. Rusty? Gave up some of his loot? Old Scrooge Williams? I don't believe it. <laughs> Let him love. You know how it is, Dad. If a brother can't give his little sister something once in a while, what good is he? Hmm. <laughs> temperature. Oh, Daddy, I'm feeling okay. It's it's just that I'm willing to share anything I've got with her, because I love her. Yeah, and because he wants me to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> about what? About Mr. Swenson's trash can. What about Mr. Swenson's trash can? I can't tell you. What can't you tell me? That Rusty knocked it over. <laughs> That's what you can't tell me. Okay, young man, up we go, huh? Don't worry, Rusty. They won't get it out of me. <laughs> oh, no. You keep secrets real good. Okay, come over here and sit down. And you tell me the whole secret. Now, what about Swenson's trash can? Uh, it was nothing. Mm, nothing? Okay. Tell me all about the nothing. Well, uh... Walking down the street with some of the big kids from junior high, and well, there was this row of trash cans out in front front of Swenson's, and mm. well, um, there was this one teensy weensy trash can, not even half full, and well, I accidentally knocked it over. Mm. Yeah, and other boys accidentally knocked the rest of them over. <laughs> nice crowd of kids you're tagging after. Yeah, isn't it? Oh, I'm not tagging after them. They like me. They think I'm okay. Now, listen, Rusty. Sweetheart, I think I better have a man-to-man -man talk with public enemy number one here. <laughs> right, and I'll have a little talk with his ma. Come on. Thanks for the sound and candy, Rusty. That's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> hmm. Dinner's gonna be ready soon. I guess I better go clean up. No. I think we better clean this up first, huh? Son, you know I can forgive almost anything except lying. Now, let's have the truth right from the top. What happened? Well, uh, I was walking down the street with the Wildcats and, uh... Wildcats? Yeah, that's what they call themselves. <laughs> it's typical. Well, they wanted to go into Swenson's to look at a saxophone he had in the window, but crabby old Swenson wouldn't let him. Mm. So when he went back in, Rick went over and... Who's Rick? Oh, uh, he's the leader. He went over and kicked over one of the trash cans. Mm -hmm. And the other guys kicked over some of the trash cans, and then there was only one trash can left. So Rick said, 
Okay, shrimp. Shrimp? Yeah, that's what they call me. Well, congratulations. <coughs> so? So Rick said, okay, shrimp. There's one for you. Hmm. Or are you chicken? So? So I went over and gave it a kick. Boy, what a mess. Trash <laughs> all over the sidewalk. Daddy, you should have seen it. <laughs> you seem very happy about it. You made a lot of work for old man Swenson. Is that something to be proud of? Well, no, but, gee, Daddy, I had to do it. Why? Well, if I didn't, what would the guys think of me? It doesn't matter what the guys think of you. It's what you think of you that counts. Shakespeare said it so very beautifully a long time ago. This above all to thine own self be true, and it shall follow as the night the day that thou canst not be false to any man. You know why he said that? Because he was chicken? Oh, cut that! <laughs> Don't make light of this, boy. I'm really ashamed of you. Well, I suppose you never did anything wrong when you were a kid. I did lots of things wrong, awful things. Things you'll never dream of doing. Oh, boy, like what? Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's different in my day. I didn't have the opportunities you have. I was raised in a slum district. We were on relief. We were very poor people. My playground was a dirty back alley. Every boy in my neighborhood was earmarked for the penitentiary. But some of us were lucky enough to realize where we were headed, and we stopped in time, became respectable citizens. Some of us didn't. But I'm making darn sure which way you're headed, young man, darn sure. And right now, it's the Swensons to apologize. Apologize? You heard what I said. Golly, Daddy, if the Wildcats hear about this, they're a cinch to call me chicken. Hmm. Well, would you rather be a healthy chicken or a wounded wildcat? <laughs> well, my son wants you to know if there's any damage, he'll be very happy to pay for it out of his own allowance. Hey, we never discussed that. Well, we're discussing it now. <laughs> well, there, there was no damage, but I worked for two hours to clean up that street. Well, I'm sorry about that, and if there's anything I can do to help, why... Yeah, sure, you can keep him away from here. Him and all those other kids. Trash. Criminals. All of them. No, no, no. We must remember they're just kids. What kids? Gangsters is what they was. That's pretty strong language, Mr. Swenson. After all, it's pretty hard for these boys to grow up in a city like this. I mean, I was a product of the street. I know what I'm talking about. I did some pretty bad things when I was a boy, too. Yeah! Tell them about some of the awful things you did. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Point is, I got straightened out, and so will they. There's only one way to straighten out them kids, and that's with this. Well, I admit the rod is useful sometime, but I think reason and understanding is a lot better. Oh, that's the kind of stuff I already heard from Miss Burns until it's coming out of my ears. And who's Miss Burns? Oh, she's the guidance counselor at the junior high. Council of Hoodlums? That's what she is. And she keeps telling me we must... Teach them, Mr. Svensson. We must help solve the problems, Mr. Svensson. Their problem is she wraps them up in cotton so no one can give them a good lesson with the club. <laughs> uh, you're just upset, Mr. Svensson. I'm sure yeah, that... There they was. Get out of my store. I don't want you in here. Get out. It's a free country. Yeah, but you, not for you. You get out of my store right now. Oh, look, I mean, you're open for business, ain't you? I don't want your business. I think we ought to give them the business anyway, fellas. Yeah, it's a good yeah. idea. You out of the store, you crazy bunch of years of folks. I don't want you in here. Put down them Moroccans. Put them down. Leave them alone. I don't want you to play with them. Gonna roll the rock in here. <laughs> okay, okay, relax, Jack. Don't bust a blood vessel. We got a right to look at the instruments before buying, don't we? Buy? You buy? What with stolen money? Oh, no, you, 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 you. Why? Well, let's not get excited. I'm sure we can settle this thing peaceably. I don't get you kids at all. What's the joke? Oh, blast off, Daddy. Oh, we got you tuned out. <laughs> Now, put those instruments down and get out of here. Now! Okay, okay. Don't make a big federal case out of it. Let's 
get out of here. So long, squirt. We didn't know your dad was such a square. Now your mother wears combat boots. <laughs> Kids are a menace. They shouldn't be allowed to walk the streets. You know what they need? They need a little of that. That's what I told you. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. What's the name of that misguided guidance character? Uh, uh, Miss Burns. Burns, huh? Well, she's got a lot to learn how to handle boys, and I'm the guy that can teach her. Come on, son. I'm just telling you that you coddle them too much. You gotta get tough with them. I know these boys. I was one of them. I was raised in the street, too. You got to be tough with them. Fortunately, I had a father who knew how to handle me. When my father hit you, you were hit. And you knew why you were hit. You remembered it. My father never gave me the courtesy to bend down and slap me, pick me up by the hair and held me at eye level and gave it to me there. <laughs> that's why these kids should be treated. Well, that's very interesting, Mr. Williams. Look, I say their parents have failed. So the responsibility rests entirely with you. Uh-huh. Well, Mr. Williams, I want to thank you for taking the trouble to come down here and give me the benefit of your thinking. You're welcome. What I mean is, none of us is so perfect that we can't learn. Yeah, you can say that again. Anyway, I've gotten it off my chest, and good day. Oh, Mr. Williams, I saw your performance at the Cooper Club recently. Oh? Huh? Mm-hmm. It was uh, quite good. Well, thank you. Except for a few things. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Now, for instance, that story you told about the man whose car broke down and uh, he goes looking for a jack. The jack story. Yes, that's the one. Now, honestly, Mr. Williams, don't you think that story is much too long? Too long? Yes. <laughs> Dragged out. <laughs> Look, it's not a one-line joke. It's a character story. I've, I've got to take my time with it. Yes, but the whole thing is so unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, yes, these days every car has a jack in the trunk compartment. Well, this one didn't. Well, all right, then. Why didn't he just go to the phone and call the auto club? <laughs> Holy <laughs> toot. <laughs> what are you getting so analytical about? It's just a joke. Oh, now, Mr. Williams, don't get so upset. I was merely offering constructive criticism. Look, Miss Burns, criticism, constructive or otherwise, doesn't mean very much unless it's backed with some know-how. Now, the entertainment business is a very highly specialized one. I've been in it over 20 years. And I've been in mine for over 30. And it, too, is highly specialized. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh wait a minute, Mr. Now, you wait a minute, Mr. Williams. No teacher worth the name thinks that her job begins and ends with a school bell. She's a highly trained specialist, and she regards her pupils as, as individuals, adjusting themselves to their environment. Now, I think that I understand a great deal about Richard Fuller's problems, and yet you come in here with only, with only one encounter with him, and you have an entirely different set of answers. A kid like that is not hard to figure out. Oh, you think not? Well, you just listen to a few facts about this, boy. And then maybe your answers will agree with mine. Richard Fuller, age 15. Family status, father deceased, mother employed as department store saleswoman. Three young sisters. Intelligence quotient, 137. Special aptitude, music. Looks like a living doll on paper. <laughs> what I saw was a leader of a rat pack that calls itself the Wildcats. The Wildcats, Mr. Williams, is not a rat pack. That was the name of their musical group, and it's a fine little band. Those junior monsters are musicians? Yes, they are musicians, and they're very good musicians. At least they were until they cut our budget. The school couldn't afford to rent musical instruments for them anymore. You see... That's why Mr. Swenson's store attracts them so. And rudeness to him is just their way of expressing their, their, their frustration and confusion. Oh, come on. Let's not get on the frustration bit, huh? Holy Toledo, frustration. All right, so you can't rent instruments. So they're musicians. Is there any law against their working after school and saving up money to buy the instruments? Yes, there is. The law of economics. 
Now, those boys work as much as they can whenever there's a job available. But practically every penny they have is spent on their families. Oh, and it's such a pity, too, because they have talent. And, and if their energies could just be, could be channeled into constructive things, they'd make us all proud of them. You're really sold on these mugs, aren't you? Yes, I am, Mr. Williams. I'm sold. And someday those mugs are going to stand up to the people who criticize them. And they're going to justify my faith in them. And that, that will be the greatest day of my life. What would it take to get this band started? Oh, too much, I'm afraid. $250 for just a down payment. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll make it out to cash. What? I say I'll make it out to cash. Oh, Mr. Williams, I wasn't suggesting that you do this. I know. Oh. Not suggesting. I'm suggesting. There you are. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. Just make sure to learn to play Danny Boy. <laughs> Mr. Williams, please wait just a minute now, please. Sit down for just a minute. Miss Day, have Richard Fuller sent in, please, now. Oh, this is a wonderful thing you've done. Look, let's call it an insurance policy to keep Manhattan from being destroyed. <laughs> oh, come in, Rick. Oh, hi, Miss Burns. I'm awfully sorry about the paper drive, but oh, I had all right, exams Rick. and everything. I want you to meet Mr. Williams. Oh. I see you've met. Yeah, I know him from the music store. He's the bouncer. <laughs> Why don't you take off that ridiculous mask? What are you doing here? I think this check will, uh, will explain what Mr. Williams is doing here. Well, what's this got to do with me? It's yours. 250 skins? What'd I do? Say the secret word? <laughs> it's a loan from Mr. Williams to buy instruments for those wildcats of yours. Is this thing any good? You can take my word for it. Now, what are you doing? I'm looking for the string that's got to be attached. <laughs> There's just one string, Rick. I want you to have your band on stage tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. You're to provide the entertainment for the PTA meeting. You mean that's all I gotta do and it's mine? No, it's not yours, it's hers. She'll buy the instruments for you. Yeah, it figured. Oh, now, Mercy, what would I know about instruments? Now, Rick, you better handle the whole transaction. Let's go ahead. Take it. Well, you got yourself a deal, Miss Burns. Oh, Richard, don't you think you better say something to Mr. Williams? Oh, yeah, thanks. And don't forget now, Rick. Tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Now, what do you think you're doing? That's $250 you gave that kid. That's more money he's ever seen in his whole life. And if I got him pegged right, he's gonna make a beeline for the first crap game. <laughs> we'll probably never see him again. Yes, we will. Tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. And if you're wrong, I'm out $250. Yes, and I'm out of a job. Why? Because I will have misjudged that boy. And then I will find that I'm unfit for my job. And so I'll quit. You'd quit? Yes, Mr. Williams, I'd quit. Because if those wildcats aren't there tomorrow night to provide entertainment for that PTA, and I will do so myself by announcing my resignation. It's past nine o'clock. Yes, we I won't know. be able to hold up the meeting any yes, longer. Well, Ms. we'll Burns. proceed in just a moment, please. Now, you're not going to go through with it, are you? All right, so a bunch of hoodlums reverted to type. Is that any reason to throw 30 years of hard work away just like that? We'll have to go ahead, Miss Burns. Well, don't, don't you do it now. All right. I'd like to introduce our guidance counselor, Miss Irene Burns. Good evening. I had a very different type of entertainment planned for you here tonight. But uh, we all know what Mr. Robert Burns said about the 
plans of mice and men. <laughs> Mine tonight have definitely gone a glee. Therefore, I would like to make an announcement. I have been guidance counselor for boys a good many years here. And I've held a certain theories about handling young people. Theories that have not always met with unanimous approval. Nevertheless, I have continued with them because I believed in them. But tonight, it, it, it seems I was in error. I'm impressed with these young men. I didn't realize you had such talent here at West Side Junior High. They're really great. But first of all, I, I want you, I want you to meet the leader of this organization. And here she is, the old hepcat herself, Miss Burns. Come on, oh, out here. Yes. Well, now, uh, what do you got to say for yourself? <laughs> Solid, Jack. Solid. <laughs> <laughs> It's really a great organization, because they don't look too good right now. No, young man, I want you to be in my office tomorrow and to explain your appearance. Well, I can explain it right now, Miss Burns. You see, uh, first of all, uh, we were late, and I'm well, awfully sorry about that, but uh, we had to wait for old man Swenson to get over the shock of us coming in as customers. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we were walking down here, all carrying our instruments, it's a bunch of cats on 86th uh, Street. No. Oh, well, this um, group of young gentlemen. <laughs> you know, they started giving us the burn. No. And, oh, well, they made some unfortunate remarks <laughs> to the effect that we were a bunch of, well, that uh, we were lacking in manhood. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, we had to tarry a bit to uh, debate the issue, and uh, <laughs> it took us about 20 minutes to convince them, to the results of which... Jay will play his next trumpet solo the hard way, with a fat lip. <laughs> <laughs> 